everybody welcome back to my channel so i know i'm more like woo hey but this is gonna be a serious kind of video um so welcome back to my channel i know it's been a little while i'm doing my best to upload as often as i can on here and with my vlog channel but with everything that's going on in the world right now um with covid19 also known as coronavirus and everything that's going on in my personal life and with my health it's just crazy right now but this is something that i wanted to do and wanted to talk to you guys about thomas i, I can hear you lurking hey y'all how it going quarantine day number four <laughs> <laughs> come here sit down for a second no oh, i haven't got my hair it's okay is there anything that you want to tell the people any advice no anything about being in quarantine not quarantine it's isolation use the hand sanitizer if make they, sure you what if they can't get it make your own out of aloe vera leaves and alcohol <laughs> just straight vodka I, I reckon there's actually quite a lot of things on youtube you should drink a video what how to make your own make hand, your hand sanitizer, sanitizer from home i guarantee there's loads all right i'll try and find something <laughs> trust him to come in and disrupt my video but that's a good point actually because I know there is a worldwide well I don't know if it's worldwide but there's a massive shortage of hand sanitizer here because everyone's buying it like crazy um so if you don't have any make your own so yeah the two main things that I want you guys to get out of this video is how the coronavirus affects people with chronic illness and the elderly and two how you can kind of protect yourself because it's not necessarily for example for me it's about me having chronic illness but for somebody like Tom that's completely healthy and I'm sure most of you guys are completely healthy it's about how you can protect not necessarily yourself but people you know because not everybody has grandparents but I'm sure a lot of you do and they come under, you know, the elderly or the more at risk patients. So it's not just about protecting someone with chronic illness, it's about protecting your family, your loved ones. I'm sure everyone knows someone who is ill or maybe comes under that racket or has an elderly person in their family. So without further ado, let's get into my list of stuff. I'm going to try and kind of go through these as quickly as I can because most of them are just like self-explanatory. Basically, I have been put into isolation. Now, isolation is different to being quarantined because when someone is quarantined, it's usually because they carry an illness or whatever and they have to quarantine them, which is basically protecting them, but more importantly, everyone else from you know contracting the illness for example in this instance the coronavirus lovely covid19 so now i am in isolation which basically means it's similar to quarantined but i'm not i don't have the coronavirus and i'm not carrying it so it's more about to protect me from the outside world uh, which means basically limiting my contact with the outside world so I've been quarantined for a week now, um, which is kind of driving me crazy already. Like I didn't think that me not being able to go outside would have been that big of a deal. Um, but now that I'm like can't leave the house except for once a week, which I'll get to in a minute. Yeah, so I don't really think it would affect me that much. Um, sorry if this is going to be a bit of a rambly video. Uh, so I leave the house like a couple times a week, mostly for doctor's appointments, hospital appointments. I go to my pharmacy like every two, it's more close to two days, but every two to three days to get medications because some of my medications, you can only get like a certain amount at a time. Um, for like one of my pain medications, I can only get one box at a time, which has 20 tablets. I take between like eight to 10 tablets a day. So there's only 20 tablets. It goes pretty quick. So I have to go to the pharmacy at least like every two days um, and then I also go to the shops maybe like once or twice a week uh, for stuff I don't know things that we may need just going for those couple things even if it is mostly like doctor slash pharmacy related just getting out the house and you know having that little bit of freedom makes all the difference and I really didn't think it would be that big of a deal but apparently 
So the main reason that I've been put into isolation is because I am immunocompromised, which means my immune system is basically on the floor, which means I, when I contract, like for example, just the common cold, it takes me weeks and weeks to get over that. And it is a huge hit to like the things that I can do. Those things that I do like in the week, like go to the pharmacy and the doctors, like they take it out of you like, as it is. So you can imagine when you get hit with something like a cold, doing those small tasks is like impossible. So because I've been isolated, there's like, there's basically, there's no point of me being isolated if Tom and my dad and Francis are all going off to work and going about in the world and then coming back home and interacting with me because it basically defeats the whole purpose. So Tom, my dad and Francis have all been sent home from their jobs to work from home and they have to basically limit their contact with the outside world so it doesn't just affect me, it affects my family. Now we're only a couple of weeks from our house being finished and Tom and I will be able to move in and we'll be able to kind of close ourselves off even more um, and obviously Tom will still be working from home at that point. We never know. I don't know what's going to happen with this coronavirus. Like I said, it doesn't just affect me. He is now working from home um, and I'll try and put in a little clip of his like setup that he's got. <coughs> He's got like, he went to work and he went and got the his computer from work. Like not just his computer that he works from home on, but like his monitors that he has. And he's got like a little setup with everything. Um, Francis is working from home, dad's working from home. It's a whole little thing and the house is crazy at the moment. What I want you guys to think about is if you've been isolated, think about your family as well. There's no point if you being separated from the world if your family members are all going out and they don't have to stop every single thing like leaving the house but you know if they can work from home if your job is something that you can do from home maybe try and get see if the works like i know a lot of works are sending people home um or non-essential staff and things like that so just see if that's something that would be possible um so now i can't go out that means tom has to go out to the pharmacy and get my medications and stuff like that all my hospital appointments have been kind of not cancelled just kind of like put on hold until further notice but i know all surgeries that are non-essential have been cancelled or kind of pushed back a bit um, my hip surgery hasn't been cancelled because it is kind of essential but it's not like an emergency urgent it has to be done right this second but we can kind of push it back a little bit um, just to kind of protect me but I know my hip every day gets worse and worse and worse so we'll see what happens with that moving on the one time I am allowed to leave and this may change if it gets worse I know my doctor said that we're gonna have to come up with a different situation but as of now you have to to get this medication you actually have to see your doctor face to face and they can only prescribe you one week's worth at a time but I'm hoping when I see my doctor next week that she'll have some more news for me and we can come up with something so the way we've got this appointment at the moment is that i turn up to my appointment in my little car with my mask on we when i arrive i ring the reception desk and i'm like hey yo i'm here and then they let my doctor know and then instead of me going into the surgery like i would would have done a couple weeks ago because normally I'd like go into the surgery and I'd sit in the waiting room with a bunch of other sick patients coughing all over me well not literally but you know what I mean so yeah when it's my turn for my appointment uh, my doctor comes out to the car park to my car and we both have our little masks on and then we walk through quickly away from the like waiting room and we just go straight into her little office and shut the door um, but she said if it gets worse that she's gonna bring me in the back way and then if it gets even worse where she doesn't she thinks it's too high risk for me to even come to the practice um, I'm sure we're gonna have to like FaceTime or some sort of situation that I can still get my prescriptions so that's the only time I'm allowed to leave the house at the moment which sucks 
Last thing I want to talk about, kind of, I don't know if this is worldwide, but there is a shortage of items that people need. And I feel like this is a message for everyone because it's just insane. The shops are ridiculous. The shelves are empty. There is no toilet roll. Like, people are, like, stock buying toilet roll, like, crazy and now there's like no toilet roll anywhere there's a shortage in bread pasta canned foods toothpaste paracetamol like just all sorts of crazy things like even ventolin like an inhaler like asthmatics and stuff i'm an asthmatic myself so i use ventolin um but yeah there's a sh there's a shortage of that in australia people are like stock buying it and it's not just mental and there's like other medications that people can't get a hold of children's paracetamol like the liquid one and it's just it's just crazy like things like that people need to stop panic buying stuff where i live at the moment what they've currently done is they've opened like one of the shops like the major supermarket brands i think it's from 6 a.m till 7 a.m and they've opened it to the disabled and elderly so that they can come in and get supplies that they need except when these elderly and disabled people have gone to the shops to get the supplies the shelves have been empty so there's no point of the shops opening the supermarket early so people can get supplies if they can't get the supplies because people are panic buying. So my message to you out there is stop panic buying. Stop buying supplies that you don't need. You know, if you've got a pantry full of stuff, you don't need to go to the shops and buy more just because everyone's doing it. And I get that when however many people panic buy, it then creates more people that don't necessarily want to panic buy to panic buy because they're like, oh my gosh, we need it. Like, we literally have two rolls of toilet roll left and that's it. It's crazy. I know that people need supplies, but it's not like everyone's shitting their pants. Like, who needs that much toilet roll? Who needs that much toilet roll? Oh, I know now they've put in a limitation to where people can only buy like one roll of toilet roll or one, not one roll because psh, that's going to last a day, I don't know. Depending on how many people you have in your household, it might not even last that, but one like thing of toilet roll. I think like one thing has like 32 rolls or 18 or something. Anyway, so they have put limitations in place to kind of stop some panic buying, but obviously there's still a lot of panic buying can go on. So hopefully they'll keep putting measures in place so people can't go crazy and buy ridiculous amounts of things. But it should have been put in from the start, like when this weeks and weeks and weeks ago when this first started getting like crazy. I think I've done enough rambling. Basically what I wanted to say was just kind of open some of your eyes to how dangerous this can actually be to people like me like if i was to contract this i would have no chance so you know i i have to take every precaution and measure that i possibly can because i don't want to die i know i've got a lot of illnesses a lot of things that are going to limit my life but this is happening now like these things are like maybe five or ten years away or whatever like this is now you know, I could have another 10 years of my life if I don't get this. So, yeah, basically, I just want you to think about if people like myself get this, we're, we're dead. We don't have a chance. Um, you know, if a normal, healthy person like Tom was to get it, he probably has a very, very, very good chance of fully recovering. Um, but, yeah, so basically my main point is think about our danger is to someone you may know and even if you're 100% healthy, what you can do to just prevent yourself from getting it. You know, wash your hands and there's all these kind of things that you can do to minimise your risk of getting it, especially in some of the countries where, you know, it's spreading like crazy. And secondly, if you can help it, please don't panic by. Think about everybody needs supplies, everybody needs things like toilet roll and 
you know, Ventolin, like there's a lot of asthmatics out there and if you can't, you know, if someone like myself that, I don't want to say like I'm a severe, severe asthmatic, but there was a period when I was. Not being able to have Ventolin, which saves lives, is dangerous. So just things like that, just think about it before you crazy panic buy. And I know a lot of people were just buying Ventolin because they thought that it would prevent them getting the coronavirus, like stupid things like that. Anyway guys, stay safe out there, wash your hands and do whatever you guys can to prevent yourself from getting this. And yeah, stay safe, I love you all. Please smash the thumbs up button guys if you enjoyed this video, even though it is a bit more of a serious video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try and upload as much as I can. Mwah! Stay safe and I will see you in my next video.